by everyone who likes to play games. I know you do. <laughs> we all do. We have been having our chess club and game group for quite a while, although we haven't been meeting lately. But I know you love to play games, and I know you would love to make your own. We've got some books in the library here that show us about different approaches to making games and different ways you can play. You can even put together your own game tournament. But what we're going to do today is talk about our final activity packet for the summer, which is going to be called the Game of Life. And it's your life. So you can make it any kind of game that you want to. And you can see when you look at different game boards, and we've played all these games, checkers and chess, Scrabble, even Pete the Cat and the Groovy Buttons, personal favorite. We have played all of these games, and you can see how each board has a different design on it, and that is because it's got different players, different goals or objectives, different reason for playing, different way to win, and different ways of moving around the board. So we got to think about all these things as we put together our own games. So what's going to be in your packet is a folder. And you're like, oh great, a folder. No, it's a game that you get to design yourself. There's several different designs like this. You'll get one in your folder and you can put any kind of design on it you want. You can color around it, markers, pencils, collage, anything you want to do with that because it's your game. But there's certain things you're going to want to think about before you jump in. So you're going to have some papers to help you along with words for you to read. And you're going to decide some things about your game, like what's it called? What's the title of my game? If my game was a book, what would be its title? What's the main idea of my game? What kind of game pieces can I use? In your activity packet, you're going to get a bunch of stuff to get you started. But this is only a starting place. You can use things that are around your house too. You're going to get some of these little game pieces that you might use for your game. You're going to get some die in case that's the way you want to move around the board. Two spaces? Okay, I'm going. Or you might use one of these spinners. This one's blank, so I'm not going to go anywhere with that until I write on it. I'm going to use the dry erase marker that's in my kit. And I think I'm just going to write numbers on it. I could make it any way I want. And the good thing about it being a dry erase marker, look at me writing upside down, is that if I decide I want to do something else or make a different game out of it, I can wipe it clean and start over and put something else on there. So these are pretty fun. They're good to use for that. So I think for my game, I'm going to use some players that I... I'm not going to use these ones this time. I'm going to use something I had around the library with me here. And these are some little reading animals that I made. I made them on a 3D printer which is a super awesome invention. You can make everything from fun little plastic toys to artificial body parts to help people who need an extra hand. They're missing a hand. Something's gone wrong. So a 3D printer is pretty cool. They have one over at Curry Public Library. So you might check that out if that's something that interests you, making your own game pieces or artificial limbs or anything in between. So I'm going to use my 3D reading animals as my pieces on my game. I've decided to call my game Lost in the Library. So my little readers are kind of lost. They got lost in a book, which is easy to do when the book is so good. You forget where you are and what's going on around you. And all of a sudden they realize, whoa, we're going to have to get out of the library. It's almost time to close. So we're going to have to get from where we are all the way around the board to the middle. And that's where the checkout desk is. So I think what I'm going to do on this is I'm going to draw a little checkout desk. 
I might build one if I had some blocks. That would be cool. You can build things to go in your game. Use some Legos to make some stuff, but I'm just going to draw it for now. Here's the desk. I'm drawing it upside down so you can see it. Here's the desk. There's probably people working behind the desk, but we're not going to show them right now. This is where we're going to check out our books. We probably need them to have a computer on there so that they can check them out in the computer system so the computer remembers who has that book and someone else can use it next time. So that's what we need to get started. We gotta think, okay, how are we gonna get started? I think I will go ahead and use the die to move our, my players around. Whoa, that went all the way over there. That's a number seven. I might decide for my rules that a certain player always goes first. Maybe I'll decide the blue player goes first because my die are colored blue. So the blue bird is going to move seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pieces. And maybe I'm going to make a rule that says I have to go all the way around the library once before I can go to the inner circle and get to the desk. I can make up any rules I want because it's my game. You can even change the rules on your game if you want to. You can start out with one set of rules and say, you know what? This isn't working the way I thought it was going to, so I'm going to change my rules and do whatever you want. Because the games you buy in the store, I'm betting that the people who designed those may have had to change them a lot. So as you start out, you might say, okay, I'm going to use the little players that they gave me from the library. And then as you go, you might say, you know what? Wouldn't it be cool to have a game where the dinosaurs all have to go to the moon. So the moon is in the middle here. The astronaut's waiting for the dinosaurs on the moon. And maybe I have a bunch of dinosaurs. I only have one today. But maybe my dinosaur is going to make his way around. It's up to you and your imagination what you want your game to be about, how you want it to work. You might want to add some extra challenges for your players while they're going around the board too. I'm thinking that my little reading animals might want to collect some books along the way. So I might make a rule that says if you stop on a red space, you get to pick up a red book. And the rule might say you need a book of every color before you can go to the middle and check out. Does that sound like it would be a fun game? Well, we'd have to play it to find out. So, that's something you might come in and do. Come keep me company for a little while. Play a game, check it out, get your own game activity packet. Because like I said, maybe I didn't say. Anyway, this is the last activity packet for the summer. And it's been a super fun summer, imagining our stories together. <laughs> it's been as fun as we could make it. I know we haven't gotten to see each other as much as we'd like to, but we'll see lots more of each other at Port Orford Public Library. So come on in. Can't wait to see you.